so I travelled to Gaza um, in the uh, middle of June. So I entered entered on the 13th of June and, and was there for four weeks. Um, the plan was to, to work at the European Gaza Hospital, which is near the border between Rafa and Khan Yunus. Um, but uh, during our stay there, we were actually evacuated uh, from the hospital and uh, we ended up moving up to Dera Bala and working at the uh, Shahada Al-Aqsa Hospital as well. So, I mean, it's, it sounds like uh, the, the state of play in a lot of ways was very different to what it was in the north, but still uh, faced with very similar issues. Perhaps the degree of um, uh, so the, 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 the food issues weren't as great in the south as they are in the north, uh, but still um, the, the issue with uh, food access and um, ongoing access to food was it's, uh, it wasn't very broad sort of nutritional um, base. So a lot of sort of grains and uh, carbohydrates and this sort of thing, but uh, access to proteins um, uh, and more and fully nutritious foods was, was very, very difficult. Um, at one stage, I think we'd been there about a week or two and um, shipments of uh, frozen chickens started coming into the into Gaza and they'd said that it had been the first time in, a, in about two months uh, since they'd seen any chicken um, in in Gaza. So, um, and then uh, while we were there as well, during the first our first weekend there was um, uh, Eid al Adha, and uh, so normally when they would be doing the um, uh, sacrificing of uh, animals and then and then uh, eating eating the meat, this was uh, not possible. Um, well, for the for the general population, not possible. There was um, the capacity to get some uh, animals in, but they were costing about two. Uh, about two thousand dollars US per head, so uh, access to to meat and and good uh, broad uh, nutrition was was very very difficult. Um, uh, then further to, uh, to that, on a, more of a, a work uh, uh, aspect, we uh, noticed that the the state of the hospital was was I guess acceptable uh, in terms of the fact that it wasn't falling apart. The the EGH. But the access to cleaning materials to maintain, you know, sanitation, maintain basic cleanliness of the hospital was um, was almost non-existent. Uh, the because uh, the EGH was seen as a bit of a um, a haven um, because it had not been under any um, sort of uh, any any attacks from the from the IDF. There were there was a reasonable sort of um, uh, community of people living in and around the hospital itself. From what I've heard, it wasn't as um, as significant as it had been previously. But the fact that there was so many people um, living in and around meant it just put so much extra strain on the um, on the, the services within the hospital, including um, like the sanitary services. So um, every other day there were issues with um, sort of sewage. Spilling out into the to the walkway, sometimes you know covering a whole uh, whole road um, running outside the hospital. Um, and at one stage as well, there was a huge pool of of effectively sewage um, in a little courtyard area, which was just outside the intensive care unit. So as you can imagine, the um, the ability for uh, organisms to to uh, thrive in that environment was was pretty significant. And so we started to see, we saw quite a number of cases of um, hepatitis A. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about that in the media recently, but this has been going on for some time. Um, we saw fulminating cases of hepatitis A from uh, various age groups um, and so a lot of deaths uh, as a result of this. Um, but also there was a huge issue with uh, multi-resistant bacterial outbreak in the ICU as well. So where the... Um, the, because of the access to sort of resources and, and cleanliness and um, and uh, all uh, specialties uh, was was very um, poor. Um, the 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 mortality rate in the ICU was already quite high, but then throwing it on top of that, that you get these people get over their initial insult, but then end up with some sort of 
um, infection, whether it be from a ventilator or in a wound or something like this, which would then uh, cause their cause their demise. Um, and the uh, so further the issue with cleanliness was was all around the hospital. I noticed that working in the operating theatres, we were constantly battling um, flies um, in and around the operating theatre area. Um, the access to sterile drapes, sterile gowns was uh, very hit and miss. Sometimes um, it was either feast or famine. Sometimes really good. Sometimes really really bad. Uh, and so the uh, management of of wounds and um, uh, and, and cleanliness and sterility in the operating theatre was sometimes um, just not possible. Um, uh, otherwise, I think the, the major thing to impress um, from my time there is the just the sheer number of injuries that we were seeing, and not just you know the the number of patients we were seeing, but the number of injuries that each patient was presenting with as well. Um, these uh, Blast injuries were, were a massive, massive problem uh, when I was there. Um, and so people were coming with concurrent chest and abdominal injuries and then some sort of limb injury too. Um, and quite a number of these were critically unwell and went on to die. Um, and uh, we're also faced with the, the issue of having to uh, triage these cases, not only to determine you know, what resources we had to, to expend on these patients, but also which ones we could actually get to theatre um, to uh, for sort of more definitive uh, procedures to try and um, fix the the issues that they presented with, and it was it was quite disturbing the number of young people who were um, coming in. So whether it be children or sort of young adults, uh, the number of sort of people in uh, sort of children and childbearing years was made up at most of the. Um, most of what we saw in terms of injuries, whether that be gunshots or blast injuries. Um, and uh, along with those gunshot injuries as well, the, the number of people that were being um, peppered with uh, rounds from these quadcopters, those those mini mini drones with little uh, machine guns mounted on them. The number of people presenting with injuries secondary to those was just astonishing. Dr. Jeremy, may I ask you a more specific yeah. question about mm -hmm. what uh, I mean, the, the condition of the medical crews there. How was your daily life? How was your daily uh, issues like uh, sleeping, eating, and a place to live, a place to uh, manage your own daily life? Uh, uh, tell us more about this uh, 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 way uh, of life that you were uh, practicing there. So we were quite fortunate. We had a um, – there was a, a group of, of four of us initially, which then dropped down to three, uh, and we had a group of uh, volunteers uh, working with us as well, about three or four volunteers working with us. We all shared a fairly small room, but we had a roof over our head. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there's about sort of six or seven of us sleeping in the same room um, at once. So it was cosy, but, um, yeah, like I say, we were out of the elements. Um, we were, um, because we were able to take money in, we could afford to buy food um, while we were there. So we were never suffering from a lack of nutrition, personally. Um, and you were, you were suffering. We, 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 weren't, we weren't particularly, in the sense that oh. we always, uh, yeah, not, not, not myself or my, my crew. Um, we we were able to, to access food because we were able to take money into 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 Gaza. But the the local teams, obviously, there's no income coming in because there's no money to 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 send on to people. So the hospital well, you're just some kind of uh, donations, or you can manage uh, to have some food from here or there. Yeah. Yes. Was that difficult for you? Was that? Uh... Okay. Um, look, I, I was right. I was expecting that this would be this would be the case, um, and um, so we sort of went in sort of forearmed that you know the, the, the food would food access would, would potentially be an issue. Um, so there were different times in the day when you, you could you could hear your stomach growing from the other side of the room, but you just sort of got on with it. Um, I think the fact that there was so much work. Um, and you could be working for you know for 15, 16 hours in the day. Um, you just sort of forget about it and you just sort of get on with it. Um, uh, there was always you know tea flowing somewhere. So as long as there was tea, we were, 
we were um, we managed to to keep going. Yeah.